This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. It's 6.37 and you're listening to the Evening Edition with Lynn and Sharmila. Uh, our next story is going to be about slogans, uh, government slogans in particular and the effect that they can have because civil servants nationwide have been instructed to adopt a new sign-off for their official correspondence that would mention the emergency. So uh, the new sign-off is supposed to read Prihatin Rakyat Darurat Memerangi COVID-19. So care for the Rakyat, the emergency to fight COVID-19 uh, and it is going to be an immediate effect effect for the duration of the emergency order. This was after a letter was issued by the Public Service Department yesterday. So in case it's not clear, what that basically means is if you get a letter from someone in the government, um, you know, they're supposed to sign off before their name with that. Yeah. Uh, previously, the sign off used to read, Saya yang menjalankan amana, or uh, I who am fulfilling trust. Um, and that was in September 2018, when the change was made to that after uh, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad became Prime Minister for the second time. As you'd expect, uh, this has drawn some criticism, primarily, I think, from Kapung MP Lim Lip Ng, who has suggested that there were other phrases that could be used, especially to reflect the government's efforts in fighting COVID-19, such as wearing a face mask, social distancing, personal hygiene or vaccines. And um, I think this reflects the kind of broader conversation that is happening around the emergency itself, because while we are not supposed to politicise it, while it is supposed to be regarded as a necessary measure in order to stabilise the economy uh, without uh, politicking and the like, that has not actually changed the way it's being spoken about because there are still political undertones in most of the conversations surrounding uh, the emergency, surrounding the fact that parliament is not in session and will not be in session. And I think we're seeing that reflected here. But the other question is, how much does this actually matter? Um, I think that in the past... Saya yang menjalankan amana or um, you know other similar sign-offs, they're, they're often cited back when perhaps there's been misbehaviour more than anything else. But otherwise, I don't know how much public impact there is. So I don't know about public impacts, but I think it certainly does send um, a sort of message, right? Because if you think of Salam Satu Malaysia, for instance, yeah. which was definitely in line with uh, Najib's administration, or even if you go a little further back, I'm not, I can't 100% remember, but there was Bersatu Manuju Wawasan for a while, which was under uh, Tun M, first time around. So there are these, um, I don't know, but you know, Salam Satu Malaysia did become a catchphrase that people used. So there's something to be said for repetition. There's something to be said for sending out um, a, a message, a political message, if you will, when it comes to enforcing this, which I think is what um, people are maybe not feeling quite comfortable about. Especially because these are catchphrases that we've definitely associated with this government, right? Um, mm. Prihatin is everywhere. Bantuan Prihatin National, you know, you, you see it recurring over and over again. So to your point about repetition, these are also words that have been repeated. So we're just going to dive into this and find out whether these sorts of mantras, slogans, sign-offs have any real impact, especially in terms of the way the public and government servants relate to one another. Um, you can weigh in. What do you make of this new sign-off? Again, it's Prihatin Rakyat Darurat Memerangi COVID-19. Um, so how does that make you feel if you were to receive an email and see that sign off, for instance? Uh, that number to call, double seven double three two nine hundred. WhatsApp, 018-789-8899 and tweet us at PFM Radio. We're going to be joined after this by James Chin, Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania. Keep it here on the Evening Edition, BFM 89.9. Break from monotony, BFM 89.9. It's just about 6.46 and you're listening to the Evening Edition with Lynn and Sharmila. We're talking today about the value of slogans and sign-offs when it comes to government communications. This is as civil servants nationwide have been instructed to adopt a new sign-off for the official correspondence that mentions the emergency and the need for it really in fighting COVID-19. It's quite a long sign-off. Um, it encompasses a, a bunch of different aspects. So we want to know how you feel about these sorts of slogans and the ones that have come in the past, right, Salam Satu Malaysia and the like, have they, have they 
done a good job, I suppose, of conveying the government's message to the wider public. Call us double seven double three two nine hundred. WhatsApp zero one eight seven eight nine double eight double nine. Tweet us at BFM Radio. Joining us now over Zoom is uh, James Chin, Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania. James, thank you so much for speaking with us. Good evening. So, first of all, what message do mantras or sign-offs like these send from the government? I think basically what they're trying to do is to reinforce the message that uh, the emergency is actually good for Malaysia. And this is essentially that we all should come together to support the government in its uh, emergency measure to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. But having said that, uh, I have to say that for most people, right, when they receive a letter from the government, the last thing they read is actually the slogan or the tagline. Most people can't be bothered to read it. They just read the, what they call it, the reference at the top of the letter and, and that's about it. So uh, at the end of the day, this is more of a bureaucratic thing than anything else. I don't think it does anything really to the public. What about on the civil servant side of it? Do these slogans have any impact on how they operate, how they carry out their duty, how they feel essentially? Uh, not really. You have to remember, uh, like all officers around the world, what will happen now that they've issued this order, this general order to the public service that they'll just simply change the uh, the tagline at the bottom of a template. So for most civil servants, uh, when they issue an official letter, it's done on a template. They don't even bother to typing, uh, you know, the tagline or the slogan. So for them, it really is uh, meaningless. In fact, the whole thing is meaningless. <laughs> uh, so in an attempt to inject more meaning then, do you think that a COVID-related slogan or sign-off would have been more effective, would have um, perhaps been more impactful? I think much more useful is actually a public service announcement maybe a 30-second spot or a 60-second spot on uh, television stations and uh, radio stations around Malaysia. Uh, goes up every three hours to remind people. Uh, we used to have that in Malaysia all the time, and we still do have public service announcement, especially uh, during election times when you get a jingle about going out to vote, uh, reminding people to vote, rem- uh, reminding people to get there early. I think those things are much more useful uh, rather than uh, these sort of slogans in in, in, uh, in uh, bureaucratic letters. Uh, the other thing I have to say is that having uh, received uh, official letters from several ASEAN countries, I think Malaysia uh, is uh, one of the very few countries in ASEAN doing it now. I can only think of one other country that has a similar system where you're supposed to add a tagline at the bottom of an official letter. Uh, most countries has actually uh, dropped that practice. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the things that I always found weird about uh, this system of official letters is that uh, many countries around the world has actually dropped letters completely. Uh, most of the correspondence you get now is actually through email. So uh, the email is usually a link at the bottom that you click for more information rather than, that, rather than a tagline. So I, I don't know why in Malaysia we, we're actually still using paper because I'm sure you all know uh, using paper is actually not a very good thing. We're just uh, wasting a lot of uh, forest resources. So with that said, what do you make of the criticism of this whole endeavour from Lim Lip Ng, the Kapung MP? Uh, well, I think the, the this is uh, very typical of Malaysian bureaucracy. Uh, they like to do all these small little things. And, and you know, the fact that the MP has actually come out and, and, and replied to this issue means that they really have uh, really nothing else better to do. Because I think uh, for the ordinary Malaysians, I can tell you that two things are on their mind. One is actually uh, how how the government or how the country deals with uh, suppressing the COVID-19 crisis. I think at the back of everybody's mind is actually uh, we're all thinking about when is Malaysia going to get the vaccine rollout, how they're going to you know, start the vaccination process, all that sort of thing. Secondly, I think most Malaysians are actually worried about the state of the economy. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people have actually lost their jobs. Uh, I, for one, have never really believed any of the figures published by the Labour Department because I think there's a lot of undercounting. Uh, the reality is that a lot of people have actually uh, lost their jobs, especially in the manufacturing sector. And uh, the other reality, of course, is that despite all the hoo-ha over the budget uh, last year when they said they're going to expand spending, the Malaysia economy is actually not restart. In fact, in some ways, we've actually uh, gone further deeper into a, a COVID-19 recession. So I think uh, in terms of, of the ordinary Malaysians, I think the 
important thing for them is actually a uh, uh, COVID stroke vaccine and uh, the state of the Malaysian economy. So all this tagline to me is actually just you know uh, distraction from 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 the reality that we face in Malaysia today. So James, you mentioned PSAs earlier. Um, what kind of messaging or communication would you like to actually see from the government right now? I think it's uh, it's really important that uh, the government lays out uh, very clearly uh, what is it trying to do with the emergency. Because right now, I suspect if I were to stand in the corner of Bukit Bintan and ask a person passing me, what is the emergency? Uh, most of them will not be able to answer any question because uh, for the ordinary person, uh, really after the announcement or the proclamation of the emergency, uh, they can't tell the difference between emergency and the MCO because, you know, there's really uh, no no distinction because, you know, even with the proclamation of emergency, they don't actually tell you that under emergency can not do this or do that. In terms of restrictions, it was already under, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, moving around, it was already under the MCO 2.0. So uh, I think it's, it's crucially uh, important for, for the government to tell people exactly that uh, we impose the emergency because we want to get certain things done, one, two, three, four, whatever it is, and that we really need to, to stick to this in order for us to get out of the COVID. Now, I'm really concerned about the COVID thing because, you know, uh, last year we sort of uh, celebrating how successful we were and, you know, a senior uh, DG of health became a meme. He was so popular because everyone thought he was doing such a fantastic job when, in fact, a lot of things were actually happening in the background and, you know, we had the explosion over the Sabah election which led to explosion of COVID cases. So I think uh, the reality is that we've not been doing uh, very well in, in terms of suppression and uh, if you look at experiences around the world, uh, the key thing is really to control the movement of people. But yeah, if you're going around Kuala Lumpur nowadays, uh, people are still moving around. So I'm not, I'm not sure uh, what we're going to do about this. James, thank you so much for speaking with us and, and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much. That was James Chin, Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania, uh, weighing in in some ways on the government's communication strategy throughout this emergency period, uh, exemplified by a small thing, but civil servants nationwide, this was our jumping off point, have been instructed to adopt a new sign-off um, that mentions the emergency. So right now it says, Prihatin Rakyat Darurat Memerangi COVID-19. And uh, this is going to take place for the duration of the emergency. So I think this raises some questions about how the government communicates and the, the means by which they choose to get that message out. Uh, we've been asking you what you make of that tagline or, or that slogan. And we have this here from Jerry. So Jerry says, these are slogans only. No substance, just talk, not walking the talk. Also, ministers don't follow these, hence double standards will not get traction from the populace. Oh, that message, Jerry, has a lot of, mm. um, I think, the, the kinds of frustrations that we've been seeing, right? The the not walking the talk, the double standards, um, you know, and the, the anger at that. And I, I completely get it. And I think that when we see slogans like this, it, it is easy to look at it and think, I have no idea, you know, whether this is actually going to achieve whether I feel that you are Prihatin Rakyat. You know, it's there, there are different yeah. ways to get that message across. Uh, let us know. That number to call, 7733-2900, WhatsApp, 018-789-8899, and tweet us at BFM Radio. In the meantime, some music to take us to the 7 o'clock news. We have Divinals with Pleasure and Pain, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my, bfm89.9, the business station.